This is Mrs. Leffers reading Romeo and Juliet, Act 3, Scene 1. Okay? So it starts off in a public place. Act 2 ends with a joyful Romeo and Juliet secretly married, right? Um, their happiness, however, is about to end abruptly. Spoiler alert. Um, in this scene, Mercutio, Benvolio, and Romeo meet Tybalt on the street. Remember, Mercutio and Benvolio are Romeo's good friends. Romeo is a Montague. Tybalt is a Capulet. Tybalt is first cousins to Juliet. Tybalt insults Romeo, but Romeo, who has just returned from his wedding, remains calm because he's in a good mood. Mercutio, on the other hand, is furious with Tybalt and they begin to fight. As Romeo tries to separate them, Tybalt stabs Mercutio, who then later dies. Romeo then challenges Tybalt, kills him, and flees. The prince arrives and demands an explanation. He announces that Romeo will be killed if he does not leave Verona immediately. Remember, the prince in this case is kind of like the mayor of the town, the person who's in charge. And he said that he's going to kill anybody who starts fights. Um, so this is Act 3, Scene 1. Benvolio. I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulet's abroad, and if we meet, we shall not escape a brawl. For now, these hot days is the mad blood stirring. So they're outside, they're in public, and Benvolio basically is like, let's just go home. Nothing good is going to happen here, let's go. Mercutio, if thou art like one of those fellows that, when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his sword upon the table and says, God send me no need of thee, and by the operation of the second cup draws him on the drawer, then indeed there is no need. Benvolio, am I like such a fellow? Mercutio, come, come, thou art as hot as a jack in thy mood as any in Italy, and soon move to be moody and as soon moody to be moved. So Mercutio is saying, like, you're one of those people who mm, might be ill-tempered, okay? Um, and he's also saying we probably aren't going to avoid a fight. Benvolio, and what too? Mercutio, nay, and there were two such. We should have none shortly, for one would kill the other. Thou! Why, thou wilt quarrel with a man that hath a hair more or a hair less in his beard than thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no other reason but because thou hast hazel eyes. Ah, what eye but such an eye would spy out a quarrel? Thy head is full of quarrels as an egg is full of meat, and yet thy head hath been beaten as addle as an egg for quarreling. Thou hast quarreled with a man for coughing in the street, because he hath wakened thy dog that hath lain asleep in the sun. Didst thou not fall out with a tailor for wearing his new doublet before Easter? With another for trying his new shoes with old ribband? And yet thou wilt tutor me from quarreling. So Mercutio's giving Benvolio a hard time because he's saying... You have fought with people for really dumb stuff in the past. So don't just say that other people fight. You're one of those other people who likes to fight. Benvolio. And I were so apt to quarrel as thou art. Any man should be by the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. And he basically says, if I picked fights as quickly as you do, Mercutio, anybody could own me for the smallest amount of money. So they're kind of going back and forth. They're, they're arguing about who likes to fight. Mercutio, the fee simple. Oh, simple. Benvolio, by my head, here come the Capulets. Mercutio, by my heel, I care not. Tybalt, follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good in. A word with one of you. So now, remember, Tybalt's on one side. Benvolio and Mercutio are on the other side. And they're going to talk with each other right now. Um, Mercutio, and but one word with one of us, couple it with something, make it a word and a blow. So Mercutio says, oh, why don't you come over here and you're going to talk to us? Why don't you just as well fight me with a blow, a word and a blow. Tybalt, you shall find me apt enough to that, sir. 
And you will give me occasion. He's like, don't tempt me, Mercutio. I'll fight you. Mercutio, could you not take some occasion without giving? Tybalt, Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. Mercutio, consort? What, dost thou make us minstrels? And thou make minstrels of us? Look to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance. Zounds, consort. Benvolio, we talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw unto some private place and reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here, all eyes gaze on us. So Benvolio's like, okay, you two. They're already starting to pick a fight with each other. Benvolio says, we can be seen here. And remember, the prince is going to kill anybody who starts a fight at this point. So he's like, let's go to the alley where nobody can see us or both of you need to shut up so that this doesn't happen. Uh, Mercutio, men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. So now Romeo comes in. Tybalt says, well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. Mercutio, well, but I'll be hanged, sir. If it were, if he were your livery, Mary, go before to field, he'll be your follower. Your worship, in that sense, may call him a man. Tybalt, Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. So Tybalt has just called Romeo a villain. And remember, he's already challenged him to a duel because he knows that Romeo has been at that party and he's still ticked off about this fact. <clears throat> Um, Romeo, Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. So Romeo's like, I have no quarrel with you, Tybalt. I can't tell you why, um, but we're cool. So if you could just leave, that'd be great. Tybalt does not like this. Tybalt says, boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. Romeo, I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise. Till thou shalt know the reason of my love, and so good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. So Romeo is, he just came from his wedding. He's in a good mood. And what he says to Tybalt here is, he says, your name is Capulet, and I hold that name tender as dearly as mine own, so be satisfied. Let's not do this. Tybalt, however, not knowing that Romeo and Juliet are secretly married, thinks that Romeo is making fun of him, thinks that he's mocking him at this point. Mercutio says, Oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission. Alla Stoccata carries it away. So Mercutio assumes that Romeo is afraid to fight, just probably like Tybalt is assuming the same thing. Alla staccata is a move used in sword fighting. So Mercutio is suggesting that Tybalt has won the battle of words with Romeo because he feels like Romeo is giving up. Tybalt says, what wouldst thou have with me? Mercutio says, good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives. Remember, Tybalt is the name of a cat in this story, and that's Mercutio keeps making fun of him. Mercutio is still talking. That I mean to make bold withal, and as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword out of the, his pilcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be about your ears, ere it be out. Tybalt, I am for you. He draws his sword. Romeo, gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. A rapier would be like the sword or the weapon that he's using. So he's saying, like, put your put your weapon away. Mercutio, come, sir, your passado. Passado is another sword fighting maneuver. So Mercutio and Tybalt then fight. Romeo says, draw, Benvolio, beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, forbear this outrage. Tybalt, Mercutio, the prince expressly hath forbid this bandying in Verona streets. Hold, Tybalt, good Mercutio. So Romeo genuinely tries to break up this fight. Tybalt, under Romeo's arm, thrusts Mercutio in 
and flies with his men. Mercutio is kind of a jokester. He has just been stabbed by Tybalt at this point. He's going to continue talking and nobody really understands that he's very hurt because he's such a jokester. Mercutio, I am hurt. A plague on both your houses, I am sped. Is he gone and hath nothing? Benvolio, what, art thou hurt? Mercutio, I, I, a scratch, a scratch. Mary, tis enough. Where is my page? Go, villain, catch a surgeon. Romeo, courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. Mercutio, no, no. Tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but tis enough, t'will serve. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I'm peppered, I warrant, for this world. A plague on both your houses. Zounds, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death. A braggart, a rogue, a villain, that fights by the book of arithmetic. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. So Mercutio is still kind of joking about the fact that he has been mortally wounded. He's been stabbed very badly. Um, and he says, uh, ask for me tomorrow and you shall find me a grave man. This is a pun referring to the fact that he will be in his grave tomorrow. Um, and it is because Romeo came between Tybalt and Mercutio trying to break up the fight that Mercutio got stabbed. Romeo did not stab him, but it is kind of his fault that Mercutio has now been stabbed. Romeo says, I thought all for the best. Mercutio, help me into some house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. A plague of both your houses. They have made worms meat of me. I have it. And soundly too, your houses. So what Mercutio is referring to when he keeps referring to a plague on both your houses, he's talking about Capulets and Montagues. He's like, curse you both. Curse both of you families. It's because of this stupid argument that I'm now dying. Romeo, this gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, that an hour hath been my kinsman. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. So Benvolio comes back. Romeo basically just said, he's like, ah, 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 Tybalt, you were my relative for an hour, and now I have to kill you, because you killed my friend. Benvolio, oh, Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio's dead. That gallant spirit hath aspired the clouds, with two untimely here did scorn the earth. Romeo, this day's black fate on mo days doth depend. This but begins the woe, others must end. Tybalt comes back. Benvolio says, here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Romeo, alive in triumph, and Mercutio slain, away to heaven, respective lenity. And fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again. That late thou gavest me for Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Tybalt, thou wretched boy that didst consort him here, shalt with him hence. Romeo, this shall determine that. So they've had this back and forth. Romeo basically said, like, Mercutio is so, he just died. And it's, he makes reference to the fact he's like, his soul is still above our heads and he will watch one of us die. It's either going to be you or me, Tybalt. Let's figure it out. And Tybalt's like, it's going to be you. And they fight. Tybalt falls. Romeo kills Tybalt. Benvolio says, Romeo, away, be gone. The citizens are up and Tybalt slain. Stand not amazed. The prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence, be gone, away. So Benvolio realizes now Tybalt has been killed by Romeo. Romeo's going to be in deep trouble with the prince. So Benvolio's like, get out of here right now before you get killed. Romeo says, 
Oh, I am fortune's fool, Benvolio. Why dost thou say? Romeo leaves, and a bunch of citizens come into the street. One citizen says, Which way ran he that killed Mercutio? Tybalt, that murderer! Which way ran he? Benvolio. There lies that Tybalt. Citizen. Up, sir, go with me. I charge thee in the prince's name, obey. Enter the prince with his attendants, Lord Montague, Lord Capulet, their wives, and others. Prince. Where are the vile beginners of this fray? Benvolio. Oh, noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man, slain by young Romeo, that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. So Benvolio says, I will tell you what happened. I was here. I'm not going to run away. Romeo killed Tybalt. Tybalt's body's right there. But he killed Tybalt because Tybalt killed his friend Mercutio, and Mercutio's body's right there. Prince, Benvolio, who began this bloody fray? Benvolio, Tybalt, here slain, whom Romeo's hand did slay. Romeo, that spoke him fair, bid him bethink how nice the quarrel was, and urged withal your high displeasure. All this, uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt, deaf to peace but that he tilts with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who, all as hot, turns deadly point to point, and with a martial scorn with one hand beats cold death aside, and with the other sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity retorts it. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold friends, friends part, and swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points, and twixt them rushes underneath whose arm an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stout Mercutio. And then Tybalt fled, but by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge. <clears throat> and to it they go like lightning, for ere I could draw to part them, was stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly? This is the truth, or let Benvolio die. So Benvolio tells the honest story of what just happened. He says, Tybalt really did genuinely start it. Romeo genuinely wanted it to end, got between the two of them, and because he came between Mercutio and Tybalt, Mercutio was then killed by Tybalt. So then Tybalt ran away, Tybalt came back for Romeo, and that's when Romeo killed him. Lady Capulets, remember this is Juliet's mom, this would be Tybalt's aunt. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some 20 of them fought in the black strife, and all those 20 could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Prince, Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio. Who now the price of his dear blood doth owe? Montague, Lord Montague. Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes, but what the law should end. The life of Tybalt. So all of this is happening. Lady Tybalt says, Romeo killed Tybalt, so he needs to die. And the prince is like, um, Romeo killed him, but he killed Mercutio. So Romeo's dad says, yeah. The law says whoever starts the fight dies, and Tybalt is now dead. So here's what the prince decides. This is what the prince says. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate's proceeding. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a bleeding. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses. No tears nor prayers shall purchase out abuses. Therefore, use none. Let Romeo hence in haste, else when he is found, that hour is his last. Bear hence this body and attend our will. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. So because of the circumstances, because of the fact that Romeo killed Tybalt, because Tybalt killed Mercutio, the prince says, okay, all right, 
here's what I'm doing. Romeo is banished. He cannot be in Verona anymore. He needs to leave the city. And if I see him, the hour that I see him will be his last hour alive because I'll kill him. So lots of drama in that scene. That is the end of act three, scene one.